Hello, everyone. Welcome to BISP Solutions. So let's start with today's session. So we are going to see some of more setups and AP module important ones like we are going to first discuss about the supplier. Then we will also see how we can create a bank bank branch and account in AP module by using cash management module. So first let's uh, talk about the supplier. Basically defining the supplier or creating the supplier in the AP is very important because for each and every invoice you are creating, you need a supplier or a vendor against which you are going to create an invoice against whom you are going to book the uh, payment for it. So basically suppliers are very important to define here. So suppliers are nothing but the vendor uh, against which you are creating the invoice and to whom you need to uh, need to create a payment as well. Fine, so let's go to the application and directly see how you can create a supplier or a vendor there. So let's first log into our application. So after login, we have already created uh, AP related responsibility. So we are going to select that for creating or defining a supplier here. Then we need to go to here. You can see supplier. Go to supplier and under supplier you go to entry. To enter a supplier. Now here you can see a tab is coming to create supplier. Just select it. Now you need to give the name here. So let's give name to our supplier like EBS as we are just practicing. So I'm giving EBS supplier here as the name. Then rest information if you want, you can fill like alias. You want to add alternate supplier name. You want to add. You want to give any URL here or anything uh, which you feel like you need to give here. As for the requirement, you can give. But the mandatory field here only is the name of the supplier or organization name it is asking for. So I'm just concentrating on the mandatory fields here. So I have given only the organization name. And after that, I will just click on this apply. To save my work. Now what will happen? It will uh, ask us whether to use existing organization. So what uh, basically this instance do is when you create a supplier, if any supplier related to it is already existing or there is something common between this uh, supply you are creating and already existing ones. So it gives us the option to use that existing one or you need to create a new organization it will ask for. So I need a new uh, supplier new organization here so i will just click on this create new organization or else uh, uh, like for example if ebs supplier i'm taking uh, somehow it matches with efc corporation which already exists then i can just select this and use existing organization i can do that also then at uh, then in this scenario i don't need to create any new supplier if it's already existing fine so i don't need it here so I will just go for this create new organization. Fine. Now the next thing which we are going to fill here is address book. Go to this address book and address book is nothing but we need to provide a supply site here. So we need to create it. And give all the address like say countries United States only of a supplier and give address any like I'm giving. EBS. Address it's just for an example. Demo purpose I'm giving EBS address only here and let's give a city like New York. County. State and by New York. Postal code. Give address name like I'm giving. New York. EBS. Address. Now this address or this supply can be used for address purpose can be purchasing. Payment RFQ only so as per the requirement you can select the purpose of the address also. And if you want you can add address purpose here also. But this is fine. After this, 
you just need to click on this continue. Fine, so it has been created, just select it and apply. So you can see our address has been created successfully here. Fine, now the next thing is to go to another tab of invoice management. Here, you can see Here you can see under invoicing, site name, operating unit, you, uh, payment currency already are defaulting. So when we have uh, given our financial option, payable system setups and payables options, so from there, this information is getting defaulted here. Fine, and in the same manner, if you go to this payment details, there also you can see various things are already defaulting. And if you want to set any of the payment method like check or bills payable for the payment as default, you can just click it here. Right now, I don't require it, so I'm not selecting anything. You can see our supplier site is also coming here. Just save it. Then if you will go to the next step of accounting here, you can see all the accounts which you have already defined. We have defined these accounts under our options when we were discussing about financial options and all we have defined these op uh, accounts various accounts there so it is defaulting those accounts here from that options so you can see liability is coming the payment is also coming here bills payable account we have defined so all this information is getting defaulted from the options which we have already set up after seeing all this one more thing you need to do here is you need to go to quick update. You need to go to key. Purchasing setup. And under this, you need to. Go to freight terms and this freight terms you need to specify one. This is very important because I have seen while creating invoice or generating the payment for the supplier, it will uh, it will generate an error. In fact, when you will try to save a uh, supplier here without giving this uh, key purchasing setup for a uh, freight term, it will not create the supplier. So it is very important to uh, give here a freight term. So I will just select none. So that our supplier gets created successfully and save it. Fine, so it got saved and we were discussing about this accounting. So I've already told all these uh, accounts are getting defaulted from the, you can see our primary ledger is also coming. So everything is getting defaulted from where? From the options, these accounts and all, just save it. So everything got saved. So basically two, three things are very important in creating supplier. First of all, you need to give us obviously a supply name or organization name. Then it will ask whether you want to use existing organization uh, or you want to create a new. So you can go for create a new organization. Then after that, you need to create a supplier side by going to this address book. Then you, if you want, you can see the invoice details and payment details as well, which are defaulting from the options which we have already given or set up in the AP. Then the next things you can also see uh, this accounting tab. There, there, there are various accounts which we have given in the options are defaulting here properly or not. Then the next thing which I have uh, told you is to go to quick update and give freight term in the key purchasing setup so that it does not create any error while creating a supplier. So I have tried to create the uh, supplier without giving this key purchasing setup for freight term, but it was not allowing me to move further. So it is important to give that also. So basically my all the things got saved here. There are various options uh, apart from this things which I'm discussing here. You can just go to each and every tab and you can just uh, set the option as required as uh, user required. But I'm just discussing basically how supplier is created by uh, minimal or well some basic information which we have. Fine. Now after giving all this thing, just.
let's just uh, check whether it has been created successfully or not by searching the supplier. Let's type the supplier name here. OK, so it's been created, but I don't want to update it. Actually, I pressed enter by mistake. So let's again. Go to supplier name. And just click on this go. OK. So you can see. Our supplier is coming here. EBS supplier, we have given address book. Let's check it is displaying properly or not. So you can see it is coming. Fine. It's been created properly now. After supplier creation, the next important things which we need to set up is bank. If we do not have any setup for bank, how we will uh, uh, move forward with the payment. So it is very important to have a bank, bank branch, and bank account setup done uh, for generating a payment but as uh, we have seen for uh, for uh, uh, setting up accounts payable uh, or for creating invoice or creating payment we need ap responsibility basically in a similar manner for uh, setting up the bank we need cash management responsibility fine so it is a different thing different module but as we require bank for payment i am just going to give you the overview of the cash management responsibility as well here I have already created a uh, cash management responsibility for my user. Uh, whatever I will do, I will just navigate and show you how you can just set up the. Uh, this uh, cash management responsibility. So for that. Let's go to navigator. So here you can see EBSC. This is the responsibility which I have already created for my user for setting up the bank. So uh, moving to, moving in the background. Like how you can uh, give this responsibility or create this responsibility here. So let's go to Java form first. So while creating AP responsibility, we have already seen this navigation that we need to go to the switch hat and switch the responsibility to system administrator. You can go from Java form or you can just go from this window also, which we are using here. You just need to uh, go to system administrator and you can just from here also you can go to uh, resp security responsibility and can uh, create a responsibility. So I'm using Java form here. Switch head. Go to system administrator. To security responsibility. Define. So let's find our already created responsibility. So here it is cash management. So you can see I have already uh, created responsibility relating to cash management. I have given the name EBSCE application will be cash management. Then I have given data group standard report uh, request group all reports start date is first March effective. Then menu menu is very important because uh, as I have already discussed for AP also uh, basically menu is very important for giving the access. If if you have a correct menu, you will get get a correct access. Otherwise you won't be able to get a correct access for performing the task. So for menu for cash management, I have given CE super user here for uh, performing uh, all the related cash management related task here. Fine, so after uh, giving the responsibility or creating the responsibility, the next thing is to give this responsibility to the user. So for that, the navigation is same. You need to be in the system administrator responsibility only. Then there you need to go to security. Then you click on this user, just expand it and just go to define it. And search for the user. Let's uh, find a user IMP26. I'm using that. Sorry, IMP26. Let's find the user. Okay. 
Now here you can see here. EBSC, I have already allotted the responsibility which I have created to my user. Fine. So the second step which we uh, do in uh, after uh, creating responsibility is to uh, define the same or give the same or assign the same to the user. Now the next thing which is very important which we need to give, uh, do here is uh, the profile. We have already discussed about the profile options as well. So basically after uh, responsibility and assigning the same to user, we need to give profiles options also. So what are the profile options which we need to give here in cache management is basically they all are same as we have discussed in for AP. Let me move back to my AP profile options which we have discussed in the previous session. So if I go to uh, profile options, OK. So yeah, so here is the list of the profile options here. So we have seen that for AP, we need to give uh, operating unit GLIT access set that is our primary ledger. Then, then there was a default country, not uh, mandatory. Basically, operating unit and GLDT access set for mandatory. I have discussed that. And then there are optional like default country, sequential numbering, SL additional data access set for. This is for secondary ledger. So basically, for cache management operating unit profile options, we require. Then we also require GL data access set, but we don't require default country or sequential numbering. You can just go for. SLA that is additional data access set again not mandatory optional if you are using secondary ledger you can assign otherwise you can ignore so basically here also the two profile options is mandatory operating unit and GL data access set for cache management as well so what I will do I will just navigate to uh, the profile option and I will show both the options for this responsibility of the cache management so let's move back to a Java form and go to profile options so navigation is same as uh, we need to go to system administrator responsibility only and go to profile. And system. Now let's give the responsibility of the cache management EBSC. And the profile. I'm going to show both uh, operating unit and GL data access set for PL. So first I'm showing you the operating unit. <clears throat> Let me try once again. Why it is not finding? I don't know. Let me do it again. So here you can see MO operating unit. Just select, say OK, and find. So here you can see under my responsibility, I have already given my operating unit as well and same for the GL data access set. I have also given my PL there. So let me show you that also. Sorry. So it is yield data access set. Select say OK, find. So you can see my PL is also assigned here. Fine, so these were two uh, mandatory thing, mandatory profile options. So after giving all this thing, when you will go to switch hat, 
you can see your EBSC responsibility will be coming will come into play. So basically what you need to do is as we have already discussed for AP in similar manner, you need to create responsibility and cash management, assign the same to user, give the des uh, desired or appropriate profile options to it, and then you can go for the setup of the bank. So basically this cash management, uh, we are not going to discuss that, but as we have required uh, this for our setup of banks. So that's why I have given a short overview of the same. Now let's uh, discuss or let's go back to our main thing that was the creation of bank. But before that, I just want to uh, uh, make it clear one more thing here that when you will do all this thing, when after that, when you will select our cash management responsibility. The next thing which you need to do is system parameters. You need to set that also here. So for that you need to go to first need to take a responsibility of cash management, then go to set up system. And system parameters. So here your legal entity should come. Fine. OK, so there is some issue. Let me just renavigate. OK, I have given all this thing uh, beside from this responsibility and assigning the same to user and profile option. There is one more thing uh, to run the security wizard. So this is very important because when you will run this program successfully, then only your legal entity and operating unit will be uh, get displayed here for usage. So I think I need to run that as well. So for that, uh, but I have already run this program, so I'm uh, confused why it is not showing. So let's rerun it and see whether it gets displayed after that. So uh, let's uh, for that we need to log in as a sysadmin. System administrative only can uh, run the security wizard program basically. So let's try to do this thing. OK, so I have to log out from this user and log in as sysadmin. So after logging as sister administrative, you no need to select user management responsibility. Basically, uh, what we are doing here is when we run the security wizard uh, program, we need to give our uh, legal entity and operating unit to the responsibility which we have created. Like we have created EBSC, so under that we need to assign our uh, legal entity and operating unit. So let's try to do that. Uh, so under user management, you need to go to roles and role inheritance. Then give a type like roles and responsibility. Category and miscellaneous. Application will be cash management. And basically, if you remember the name of the responsibility which you have created, just give that. So I remember it's EBSCE. Now just click on this go. OK, 
okay fine so after that you can see the role which we have created is coming here ebc we just need to go to update it is not showing here let me just okay so here the update is coming just select it open it and after that go to security wizard the first one ceu mx security wizard you need to run this first uh, wizard and you can see uh, i have already added my legal entity leebs to it and uh, i have also given grants like this uh, bank account can be use maintain in bank account transfer so i have enabled all the options for it so basically my concern was i have already given the legal entity here but it is not displaying in my system parameter why so let's rerun it and see so if your legal entity uh, you are coming this uh, coming this to program for the first time so what you need to do you just need to go click on this add legal entity and add your legal entity here so i have already added so i'm just clicking on this apply apply fine let's We have point of date and we have done all the things. Fine. Save it again. Fine. And let's log out and log in again. And let's take EBC responsibility. Go to setup, system, system parameters. Just open the form. try to a legal entity is not displaying it here i don't know what the issue is so okay i'm putting a hold on this thing for now let's try to create a bank account then we will come back to the system parameter again so basically for creating a bank uh, uh, we need this ebs cash responsibility only which we have created then you need to go to these setups And a setup. You need to go to banks. And again, you need to select bank. Now let's try to create this bank. So for creating a bank, just click on this add uh, create icon. Give a country name. I'm taking United States only. bank name so i'm giving bank name as ebs bank one i'm just filling the mandatory field so two fields are uh, mandatory first country and name of the bank after giving this just click on the save and next now if you want to add an address for the bank you can add here let's add address of the bank Click on this create icon, give address of the bank. Like I'm giving here for practice, EBS bank. 
address. If city giving you York only. Fine. And apply. So it's been created to save a next. If you want to add any bank contact details, you can also add it from here. Just click on this create contact and you can add. <clears throat> I'm not uh, adding right now, but if you want, you can just add, give a name, phone, email address here. Fine. Just clicking on this create contact, you can do the same. Just after that, just finish it. So you can see the bank EBS bank one has been created. So here is the information coming of EBS Bank. Now the next thing which we need to create here is the branch, bank branch. So we have just created bank. Now we will create a bank branch by clicking on this icon and a create a branch. So it is saying that we need to create a branch for the country United States and bank name with EBS Bank 1. So it's correct. Continue. Now give the branch name. <coughs> so my bank. Branch name will be EBS Bank Branch 1. And uh, branch that is fine. This thing is not mandatory, so I'm just going to save a next option. Then if, uh, in a similar manner, if, like you have added the address for the bank, if you want to add the address of the branch, you can also add it by just creating on this, uh, by clicking on this create icon. You can create address as well and after that, save and next. So I'm not creating address. It uh, it will be created in a similar manner as we have created address for the bank. I'm just going for the save and next. And same, uh, if you want to add any contact details, you can add it and then finish. So in a such manner, you have created your branch as well. Now the next thing which we are going to create in the bank is the bank account. So for that, you need to go to create account and click on the icon here and uh, create account and it will ask you the country, bank name and bank branch. All the th three things are displaying properly. I'm just uh, clicking on this continue to create account. So in bank account, oh no. Let's hopefully a legal entity should get displayed. So you can see a legal entity is coming here. Just select this legal entity and save, uh, give it here. Now, for which purpose this bank account you are going to use it is very important that this bank can be used for payables module or pay payroll also or receivable also. So I'm just enabling it for payables and receivable both module. And next. Now you need to give your account name. I'm like I'm giving EBS account. One account number. I'm randomly giving any number here. Then currency. If you want to allow multiple currency usage for this bank, you can just enable it. Rest details are not mandatory, so I'm not using it. Uh, giving it here and just save it next. Now the next thing is you need to give a cash account as a mandatory field here. So that, let's give it. Let's give a cash account. It's a cash account here. So it's create code combination, select and give it to you. And if you want, the uh, rest of the uh, accounts are not mandatory, but if you want, you can give, like I'm also giving cash clearing all as well here. For reconciliation purpose, it is important to give cash clearing account. So let's give that account as well. Sorry, 
I need to give cashew. So this is the cash clearing. Select create the code. Select fine. So next uh, rest of the uh, counter note mandatory you can give as per your requirements. So I'm just giving cash and cash clearing only and just finish it. So we are done with our account as well as so it's very uh, easy. What you need to do is for uh, setting a bank. First, you need a responsibility of cash management. We have seen what are the responsibility and we have also talked about the uh, wizard uh, security wizard program, which you need to uh, run. Uh, basically, it is run by system administrator only. And after that, uh, you need to go to. Uh, the setup under setup you need to go to banks and uh, banks there is one, one more bank we need to select that that was the, uh, this is the navigation under setups you need to go to bank and then you need to set up your bank then bank branch then bank account and the best thing is it will uh, give you one by one everything when you will done with the bank creation it will uh, give us how um, the next field to create branch. Then when you're done with the branch, it will give the next thing to create an account here. So basically you can do configuration of all the three one by one. One by one. Fine. So we are done with the bank as well. So here you can see bank is coming EBS bank one branch EBS bank branch one and account EBS account one. So all the three things are completed. Now let's move back to our EPT. So we were talking about the setup. So First, we have seen the supplier, how you can create a supplier. Then we have also completed with bank, bank branch and bank account. And uh, regarding system parameter where a legal entity was not displaying, I will see that separately and I will show you that thing again in a uh, further session. Fine, so I'm uh, right now I'm just moving forward with the next topic. So we are done with the supplier, bank, bank branch and account. The next thing which we are going to see is the Payment documents fine. So what is payment document? Basically uh, use the payment document window to define the payment document for an internal bank account like payment documents are like how you're going to pay it. What is the document you're going to use it like you are going to uh, use text or it will be an electronic payment. So you need to define this payment document in the application. So you must create at least one uh, payment document before you use a bank account to create invoice payment. You can create an unlimited number of payment uh, document for an internal bank account. When you define bank uh, payment document, you can only select payment format that use the same currency as the bank account currency. If the payment, uh, sorry, if the bank account is a multi currency bank account, you can choose foreign currency payment format as multiple currency payment format. So basically, while defining a payment document, you should also pay attention to the payment format as well. So this point basically talk about that. So so in simple terms, so end document is nothing but the uh, the check or electronic payment or whatever document you're using for the payment. You need to define the same into the application. So what we will do, we will quickly go to the instance and we will prepare one payment document related to checks and see how you can uh, create that thing. OK, so let's go to the uh, instance. So here is my Java form, so I'm using that only. So for uh, now for payment payables document from here, we need responsibility of uh, accounts payable. So basically this cash management responsibility was uh, only uh, concerned for the uh, creation of the banks and bank branch and bank accounts. So we are done with that. So now we will move back or switch back to the responsibility of accounts payable. OK, uh, let me try one more time for system parameter. Uh, 
basically that system parameter which I am talking about is uh, will be used when we will uh, do cash reconciliation and all in our uh, cash management module. But as I have discussed about it, so I'm just showing you whether it is running now properly or not. Otherwise, I will let you know in some another session about the system parameters. Let me try one more time. Okay, so it is not displaying legal entities. It's fine. Basically, the usage of the system parameter will come into play more in cash management module. So the basic thing which we required for from the cash management in our AP is for the bank only. So we have completed that. So not an issue. So let's move back to our accounts payable responsibility and now focus on the creation of the payable documents. So navigation for it will be going to the setup. Going to. OK, so I think I have missed one point here. While creating a branch, I have not add my organization there, I think. Let me check that quickly. Going back to EBS cash management. Going to set up. Bank. Bank account. Let's search our bank account. ABS. Here it is. <clears throat> Let's just select it. Update the count. OK, so I have done, I think. Information control, access, contact. OK, so here it is. So while creating the account, we also need to add organization access. Here we need to give our operating unit. So just enable the use of this account. I'm clicking both payables and receivable and add the organization here. So our organization is nothing but operating unit. Just select it and add it to here. Continue. Actually, I I just skip it when I will when I was creating the uh, the account in the first place. Now just apply. Finish. So it's got updated. OK, fine, so. It's done. OK, moving back to payable document. So. OK, here it is. So basically what I was discussing about, I was discussing about the payable documents. Fine. So for payable document, we need to be here only uh, because we are creating a payable document related to a bank account. So we need to be in sorry. I have told that we don't require EBS cash management responsibility, but I was wrong. I need uh, res this responsibility related to cash management only for creating payables document as well. So you need to be in this responsibility only. Then you need to go to setups under setups. You need to go to bank and under bank. You can go for bank or bank account, whatever you feel like. And again, you need to. Give the account name here. Okay. So here 
you can select this account and you can see here manage payment documents is coming. You just need to go here. And click on this create to create a payment document. We are going to create one for check. So I'm giving name here as EP. Is. Check. Paper stock type I'm giving pre numbered. Then format is very important. So basically I'm going to use the format which is already provided by the Oracle seeded one. You if you want, you can also create a format separately, but basically I'm going to use the Oracle one only. So I'm using. Is the check format already provided by Oracle? And you need to give first available document number and last available document number. <coughs> And if you want to add any checkbook details and all, you can go for that only. But I'm just giving the information which is required mandatory. For creating a paper document. So I'm done with this thing after that just apply. So you can see it's got created. OK, so I was typing EBS check, but it it took it as VBS, so fine. So our payable documents name is now VBS check. So we have created one uh, payable document here. Uh, so let me try to update this if I can update the name. OK, fine. Now apply. So here my here is my payment document. So this is one document I have created of the check in a similar manner. If you want to create any electronic fund transfer and all, you can create a payable document for that as well. So basically the important thing here, which we keep in mind is the format. You should create a payment document for the correct format. So I have as I was creating a check, I have taken a format of laser check format, which is already seated by the Oracle or else you if you want, you can create a format of your own customized one. Uh, it is a separate task. You can go and create a format and give all the information required there and create a format and link that to the payment document as well. But uh, for simplicity, I'm using the format uh, given by the Oracle. Or you, if you want, if your user wants, you can use a task format and can create a customized one as well as per the requirement. But right now I'm using the Oracle seated one only. So I have done with the payment document. Now, after payment document, the next important thing here is the payment process profile. The payment process profile is a setup entity that controls the payment processing. So basically, payment process profile plays a very important role in the payment because it controls all the payment processing uh, here in the application. So the payment method and the other invoice attribute drive the assignment of a payment process profile to each document payable. Assigning a payment process profile to each document payable fails Oracle Fusion payment, how to handle the invoice from a serial note payments and payments files during each step of the payment process. So basically payment process profile is very important to control the payment processing. So it is very important to uh, create payment process profile here in the application. So what we will do, we will go to the application again and we will create one payment process profile. So basically payment document is used to uh, see that what is the document you're you, you going to use for the payment, like you're going to use checks or electronic payments or else whatever is the document for the payment. So for that payment document is there and to control the payment processing, the payment process profile is important. So we need to create that as well. So uh, for creating payment process profile, we need a AP responsibility. Let's quickly switch the responsibility now to EPS AP. And after switching the responsibility, go to setups. Go to payment. And then go to payment administrator. So 
the scroll down you will find this payment process profile you can see create profile for payment processing the profile can tell all the rules how about how payments are created and disbursed so basically this payment process profile is for controlling the payment processing that it will define and it will contain all the rules that how the payment is going to be created in the application and dispersed. So basically payment process profile is for that purpose. Just go to task to create. And click on this create icon. Now you need to give a code name and all. So let's give a code here. I'm giving EBS. Payment process profile. I'm giving name as EBS check payment process profile. If you want to add any description, add. Then payment instruction format is nothing but the same format we have used for creating our payment document. So I'm using that only. Now processing type will be printed I'm using. Our default payment document. We will just assign the payment document which we have created just now. Okay, with the name of EBS. So EBS check. I'm going to sign that. Rest information is fine. So this was the basically very important details which we need to fill in here. Then usage rule. So here what you can do is if you want to use this payment process profile what for any particular payment method or any particular organization or particular bank or particular currency, you can just go to specify like if you want to use this payment method specifically for check, you can do it for specify and add up specific payment method like if I want for I say uh, check. You can just search, select and select that here. Fine. So right now I don't want for specific I for I want this for all the methods. If you want specific bank like bank which we have created, if you want to use this specific uh, this uh, payment process profile for specific bank, so you can just go and add a bank which we have created. Like you can just uh, search for the bank, uh, select and select it here. So what will happen this? Payment process profile will be available for the usage for this bank only. Fine and like in a same manner, if you want an organization, if you want our organization like OUEBS, which we have created this payment process profile for that uh, for only this organization or operating unit, you can just select that. Fine. So if you want any specific uh, payment method, currency, bank, or your first party organization here. You can just give here or if you want this payment process profile to be generic one for uh, any payment method organization or bank or currency, you can just click or select the all option here. Fine, so let it be. I have selected a particular bank and particular organization, so let it be here and then the payment instruction creation rule. If you want, you can give this also. Expand it like if you want payment grouping on the basis of like so there are various options available like first party payment grouping first party organization first party legal entity payment currency payment date or payment reason you can give <clears throat> it's required by you then there is a payment or uh, overrides payment limit if you want to give any then there is separate remittance of uh, advice and additional options if you want you can just expand and fill in the information so basically this is the information which I required for my payment process profile. So I have given that much here and after that just. Apply it. Our payment process is created. Let's just check and search whether we are getting it or not. So here you can see our. Payment process profile is completed. Fine, so basically payment process profile help us to control all the payment processing that how payment is going to be made in the application. So this was about the payment process profile and basically we are going to see this payment process profile while creating any payment. So 
we are done with this payment process profile also. So let's quickly uh, make one invoice and see how you can create a payment for that. Fine. So let's go to application. We need to be in the AP responsibility only for creating an invoice. So you need to go to invoices, expand and entry and invoices again. So you can see our operating units coming standard. Now let's add our supplier name. What we have created. So we have created with the name of EBS. Let's search with this. So EBS supplier is coming. Just select and say OK. Supplier site is coming. We supplier site we have created while creating the supplier. It's coming now invoice date. Let's take today's date only. Uh, before uh, creating an invoice, you should make sure that this period is open. So we I have already discussed this thing before. But. Let me check whether the March period is open or not. I guess March is not open for my AP, so. Let me check that first. So. I'm just closing this form for now. I need to check for March whether I have. Opened the period or not. So for that I need to go to accounting. Control payable period. OK, let's see whether it is open or not. OK, so it is open our March and April. Both the periods are open, so it's fine. Now we are ready to. Create with the invoice, so we need to go to invoice entry and invoices back. Again, we need to give the supplier. Supplier site invoice date. I'm giving the number as demo one invoice number. Invoice currency is coming. Give any amount. Say 100 USD. OK. Payment currency is coming fine. USD. Rate date. Which action you can change to receipt, purchase, order, or invoice? Let's take invoice only. And let's see what else mandatory field is required. Term date is coming. Term is immediate. The next is payment method. So let's give payment method here. Let's take check only. And what else? Let's see what else information is required. Mandatory one. I think that's all. So for creating the invoice, we need this all information. So we have filled all the mandatory one. Now we need to go to lines. <coughs> Give amount here in lines. Go to distribution. Give amount and account for which you are creating the invoice. Let's take any expense account here for a practice. Let's search for any expense account. It's a warranty expense. OK. OK, just save it. Uh, 
so we are done with this now what now next thing which we are going to do to actions and validate it validate the invoice So you need to uh, you can see here status is validated so it's got validated successfully now the next thing is we have created the invoice right now what we need to do is the payment so there is two method for creating the payment is you need you can go to actions and from actions you can go to pay in full option and you can just after giving the bank account you can create a payment or else you can just go to uh, i will show you that thing uh, uh, after showing you this thing first so let's uh, first see this how you can uh, can uh, create a quick payment here so for creating that you need to go to actions then click on this pay in full okay Now here, just check all the mandatory fields. So here you need to give a bank. So there are two methods, as I was saying, for creating a payment. First is the quick method, which you can just after creating invoice, after validating can go to actions and from there only you can pay or else from the payment work area also you can create. So I'm just using the first one that is from the invoice work area only after updating, going to the actions, how you can make a payment. So we need to give a bank here. OK, sorry, we need to give EBS bank here. Fine, so we are done with this bank. Now let's see what is our mandatory. So payment process profile. So as I have said, while creating a payment, this is very important. That's why we have created a payment process profile in the first place. Now we will link this. So it is coming EBS check PPP, which we have created. I think the rest information is fine. So we are done with this information. And after that, just save this. So after saving, it's done. If you want, you can go for an invoice overview or payment overview here. So here, all the information you can see is coming of the payment. And you can go to invoice overview also. So invoice overview, you can see here. Or approval was not required. Status validated. Account to account process payment fully paid is coming. The status is fully paid now. So we are done with the payment of the invoice here. Fine. So this is how you can create the invoice. Let me go again to the invoices and search for the invoice just we have created just now. Okay, so if I go to view payment, all the information of payment also is coming in the view payments tab. Fine, so we are done with the payment also. So we are we have uh, gone to this actions and from actions we have pay in full to this invoice or else you can go to payment also here in the payments work area entry and and payments and from here also you can uh, create a payment for the invoice in the same manner which we have done so basically we are going to end up in the same window or the same page for uh, creating a payment but there are two ways you can go from the invoice work area from the actions or else you can uh, create a direct payment from the payment work area as well so 
this is how you can create invoice and you can create a payment for it. So in today's session, we have seen uh, that how you need to create a supplier, which is very important. Then you need a cash uh, management responsibility to create a bank, bank account and a branch. So we have seen all these things and we have talked about the payment document. We have created one as checks. Then after that, we have come back to payment process profile. And uh, this is very important for controlling the payment processing and very important while creating a payment. It will ask for the bank and the payment process profile mandatory as a mandatory field. So you need to give that also. And one thing uh, one should keep in mind, like supply you can create from the uh, AP responsibility, but for creating a bank and payment documents, you need a cash management responsibility. Then again, for creating a payment process profile, you need a payment response uh, AP responsibility. So we are done with this and we have seen how we can create an invoice and how you can create a payment as well uh, by using the two methods like quick payment from the invoice work area and then you can use payment work area as well for that. So this is all for today. Thanks for watching.